miracle of Hokulea finds that there's six masters left, not in Polynesia, not in Melanesia, but in Micronesia. By miracle, we find the youngest, Pius, Mao Piailuk. But even the greater miracle was Ma when he came back for 30 years and took every one of us, yanked you through the window of time into the old ocean, and nobody else could do that on the whole earth. That's the miracle. Then he stayed with us and trained us, never went home, never left our side so that we wouldn't die at sea. The words of the second movement are inspired by Mao Piailog from a speech he gave to the very first crew of Hokulea and from lessons uh, between Nainoa Thompson and himself. Mao came from Sarawa to Hawaii and he spent a year with Nainoa. And they'd go out most every night and they'd look at the stars and Mao would name them and Nainoa would repeat it. And they'd name the rising point of the stars and the setting point of the stars, which is key to a star compass so you can get your direction at sea. The orchestration in this movement is symbolic of the seas and stars. The strings situated at the bottom of the score sustain a block chord it's a large sound mass that represents the vast oceanic properties of the sea. At the very top of the score, where the high winds are normally notated, we have symbolic representation of the sky and stars. Their music is light and sparsely orchestrated and always in a high register, so it has a very sparkly star character. In between these two instrumental families is a chorus of male voices. Situated above the strings and under the winds, they sing music of learning, music of questions, as they study the sea below and the sky above them. And then they went out and they looked at the clouds. They looked at it at sunrise and sunset. They would watch the kinds of clouds. They would watch what direction they were coming from, how fast they were moving. They watched the colors of the clouds. They'd observe all the different patterns of the sky, and that was the key to telling weather. And then after that, they'd go out and I know a small boat, a lot, often, and they would observe the patterns of the swells. They'd observe it in the daytime, and then at night, when you couldn't see them, Nino would feel the patterns in the rise and fall of the boat. So even when you couldn't see the swells, you could determine your direction. And Mao did two essential things. Um, he came, brought back our ancestral knowledge and skill and courage, and intelligence and brilliance, and he sailed Hokulea, 2,500 miles, open ocean, first time in 600 years, pulled Tahiti out of the sea, and started this whole process of uh, lighting the candle of hope that Native people have a place and that they're going to find their own way. Mao asked Nainoa a few questions. He said, uh, can you name all the stars? And Nainoa said, yes, I can. And he said, can you point to Tahiti? And Nainoa pointed. Mao said, good. And then Mao said, can you see the island? And that confused Nainoa a little bit because you can't see Tahiti from Hawaii. So he thought about it. And he said, no, I, I can't see the island with my eyes but I can see the image of the island in my head. And Mao smiled and said, good. Keep that image in your mind. The navigation is always from the inside. If you lose that image, you are lost. But if you keep it, you will always find your way to that place you want to go. And that was the last lesson. I know I'd passed. He graduated. <laughs> <laughs> 